This is Natalia, a successful dancer from Barcelona. Performing in public is a joy, but Natalia hides a painful condition. She suffers from an inflammatory bowel condition called Crohn's disease. Her condition means she's endured sudden debilitating attacks of diarrhea and sickness for many years. The attacks I suffer with this disease normally translate into stomach pain. I have lots of stomach pain and I get very nauseous, so I don't eat and then I feel worse and more tired. Natalia is just one of many thousands of people who suffer in silence from illnesses caused by microbes inside their intestines. Combating these diseases is the aim of a project called MetaHit. The goal is simple, to differentiate between helpful and harmful bacteria in our gut. It's a huge undertaking, and the collaborative work of scientists in Europe has led the way in what's now a worldwide effort. Pierre Bork is one of the team. So the big goal is really understanding our uh, microbial communities to an extent that we can improve human health and well-being. And again, this is, uh, comes in several steps. One step is that uh, we have to figure out first what these communities are, how all the thousands of microbes in us uh, work with each other and with us or against us. And then if we get this understanding, how can we drive them uh, to uh, yeah, improve diseases? Natalia's symptoms result from her intestines becoming inflamed. Compared to a healthy gut, the lining of her intestinal wall is damaged, crisscrossed with lesions and cracks covering the surface. Over time, the lining has become roughened with scars. These scars act as obstacles for food passing through. For Natalia, that means painful cramping and nausea. Crohn's disease is one of several intestinal diseases on the rise in Europe. Scientists know that the diseases are the result of bad bugs in the gut, but exactly what's causing the increase remains a mystery. However, scientists have a hunch. Ironically, it seems that our obsession with cleanliness may be to blame. As developed countries have become cleaner and people have had better access to the health system, antibiotics, vaccines and so on, these kinds of diseases stemming from the aforementioned hygiene habits have steadily increased. What has happened, we think, is that although we have eliminated harmful bacteria, we've also eliminated healthy, beneficial bacteria, which perform some important functions in our body, in our intestine, to be exact. Our gut is home to a staggering two kilograms of microbes. Most are helpful, digesting food and producing vitamins. But with inflammatory bowel diseases, the type of microbes present appears to change. Part of the MetaHit project is to single out bad bugs, the ones that make us ill, from those we need to keep us healthy. To do this, scientists are creating a map of all the microbes in the gut, both good and bad. The cartography of which will aid not just in the treatment of the diseases caused by bad bugs, but also improve the acceptability of drugs prescribed. To succeed, it's critical to understand the workings of the microbes' genes. But that's easier said than done. Incredibly, scientists have identified over three million microbial genes. The ultimate aim is to identify every gene in every microbe in the gut, a vast collection called the metagenome. Metagenome is collectively all these genes that we have determined in our experiments, 150 more, times more genes in the metagenome than in our own genome. Like, if these were genes of our genome, this would be the genes in our metagene. Much bigger. At the Val Debron University Hospital in Barcelona, scientists have the rather unenviable job of investigating stool samples from patients with Crohn's disease. They want to see if the microbes they find differ from the ones living in intestines of healthy people.
Bueno, hemos seleccionado pacientes con enfermedad de Crohn y sus Crohn's familiares. Eh, lo que queremos ver es eh, las diferencias que existen entre los microbios y las bacterias, bacterias de las heces entre estas personas relatives. con la enfermedad y sus familiares. Until recently, studying bacteria in the gut was incredibly time-consuming. It meant having to grow each bacterium in the lab and investigate them individually. Las técnicas de cultivo de bacterias, las técnicas antiguas o las técnicas más clásicas, solo permiten crecer a un número muy determinado de bacterias para las que disponemos un medio en el que puedan crecer. Today, technology speeds up the process immensely. Here at INRA in Paris, Metahit scientists are using what's called a sequencing machine to identify the genes from the bacteria. First, the DNA from the bugs is purified. Next, it's broken up into little pieces and then it's sequenced. The sequencer can determine hundreds of millions of genes in bacteria at the same time. It takes about a week to get the sequence, but the numbers are so tremendous that we can really count with precision the DNA, the genes that everybody carries in, in the body. With the bacterial genes identified, the next step is to make sense of them all. To do this, scientists have turned to powerful computers. They help scientists identify exactly which bacteria genes are associated with which diseases in the gut. Specifically, the challenge is to see which microbial genes are missing in patients suffering from inflammatory bowel diseases, or IBD. And the MetaHit team are making great headway. What we found in our uh, in our data is that the IBD patients uh, have the genes coming from the microbes are much fewer than the genes that are coming from microbes in healthy individuals in the human intestine. The less diverse an ecosystem is, the more unstable it tends to be. The fact that there are fewer species means there are gaps for other potentially harmful species to occupy. In the bowel, where there's less diversity and there are fewer types of bacteria, the empty holes are filled by potentially dangerous bacteria, which can induce an infection or an inflammation. This is the case in Crohn's disease. Scientists are only just beginning to understand the impact intestinal bacteria have on our health. But the future looks promising. The long-term goal of MetaHit is to come up with diagnostic tools um, from these tool samples where you can, you can take the samples and look at the signature of the microbes and the functions in there and try to see if that, if that can be used to predict if you will have a certain disease, for example, IBD, or if you're, um, if you're um, prone to obesity. Hopefully, with better diagnosis, will come better treatments. And that's another important goal of the European MetaHit project. MetaHit is on the cutting edge of our understanding of relations between microbes and us. It will lead to a, a revolution in medicine the new approaches which will be targeting no longer only our own genome, but also what has been dubbed our other genome, the collective genome of microbes that live with us. For Natalia and millions of other sufferers like her, there's real hope for improved health. <laughs>